Alright. So, we've done our prep work here. Uh, we came in, I came in and ground out. There was a crack running up the wall this way and running up the wall that way. Came in, ground that out. Uh, mixed up a mortar and put it in the wall. I did this yesterday. I think the high yesterday was about 50. Um, it's starting to cure now. Uh, it was pretty windy last night, but as you can see, it's a little tan. Uh, I took some home last night and I dried it out in the house. Had it sitting on a vent on the floor. And you can see, I think in the wall it's going to come out a shade darker than what it came out when I you know, kind of speed dried it. Um, and, and this color isn't, isn't where I, really where I want it to be. It's a little whitish and a little beige. So I came back this morning when I started. First thing I did was I mixed another color, uh, mixed some uh, a grayish white mix into the mix that had that buff color in it. So I cut it, uh, cut it into that, and it's starting to cure. And this color looks like the color I want. It's a little gray and a hint of beige is what the outer uh, wall looks like. In some places it's a little darker. Uh, most walls you got to pick a color and kind of go with it. Um, you know, down here at the bottom where it's had a lot of water on it, it's gotten a lot darker. And uh, we're just going to use one color to come across this thing and match it in so it doesn't look so noticeable when it's finished. But um, anyway, so we'll rake this out. start at the lowest point down here and start tuck pointing up and then when I'm finished I'll do a little bit of wire brush to finish it. But we're using a hawk, essentially a tray with a handle of dead center on the bottom. Put a little mud on it. This mud I'm using is a little sticky and uh, that's good because you want it to stick to your tuck pointer a little bit just enough to work with and also it's not terribly wet as you can see uh, it's like kind of you know, wet soil let's say wet soil consistency um, I'm not I don't want to make a big mess on the brick that I have to spend a bunch of time cleaning uh, so when I leave you can't probably even see this but there's a little bit of film just a little bit of film on these brick and that's the most I want to leave with when I finish tuck pointing that way when I come back to wash down, it wipes pretty much right off with water, maybe a little vinegar in it. Worst case, you got to throw some muriatic and some water, muriatic acid, and wash it with that. So we'll start tuck pointing. Again, these are the tuck pointers I use. Uh, come in different sizes to match the joints you got. And you got bigger joints here and there. you hold the hawk, hold the hawk up to the line that you're uh, tuck pointing and just push the mud right into it. These joints here, these horizontal joints are called the beds and these guys here are called the heads. So these are head joints and bed joints. thing I like about using tuck pointers is you're pushing in, you're really packing that mortar in, you can feel it going in. At the end of the day, your thumb should be sore. joints out. When you're tuck pointing, it's probably better to overpack them because you're going to come back with a wire brush and a hand brush when you're finished and brush them back a little bit. 
you hit them with a wire brush, that'll reveal that aggregate that's in the mortar. Uh, so you get a good finished product that feathers in nicely with the mortar around it. Sometimes you gotta turn that, turn the tuck pointer at an angle to really make sure you're getting mud in there. Really want to make sure you pack your joints. It's very important. Otherwise, they're just gonna wear out quicker. The house shifts at all. They're gonna pop.